Hello, Washington managers and Alaska managers. I wanted to send a little video out. Um, some of you guys are getting ready to open for the summer. Some of you guys are currently open. And I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, my district manager philosophy of running a district office for success, how to really maximize it and set you up for the long term. Um, I'll send out a, a document that will uh, go with this, but I think when you watch this, it's important to go over your action steps and what are you doing at a high level, what aren't you doing at all, and what areas do you do, are doing but you need to improve and put those down. But my, my DM philosophy basically comes down to three words, and that is recruit, develop, lifestyle. That's it. It's very, very simple. And it's in that order because it can't happen in reverse order. You can't just have lifestyle and the recruits automatically show up. You have to do it the reverse way where we're recruiting, you develop those people, and that leads to lifestyle. Uh, the more lifestyle you have, then you end up with more development because they want that lifestyle too. And then you have more development, you utilize them correctly, then you can recruit more and it goes back and forth. But you have to start with the, the first things first and that's recruiting. So there's a few steps under each one. So starting with recruiting, um, there's weekly management and daily management. So with weekly management, the first thing that every office should have under weekly management for recruiting is a list of 50 to 100 sources. That's 100 different ways that you could advertise and recruit. One source might be a poster at this college. One source might be an online posting at this college. One source might be a high school or a high school poster. One source might be um, hotspot flyering at this specific um, complex by the Chipotle and the Starbucks by the college right around the corner. Uh, one is you know Facebook messaging. Uh, social media messaging, there's all sorts of ones there, but you should have 50 to 100 specific sources. And weekly at your staff meeting, you go over those sources and you say, how, how are we utilizing these 100 sources? Because if you're not generating a lot of touches, chances are that you either don't have a list or you're not looking at it and saying, hey, we're, we're really maximizing this list. So if you don't have that list, that's the first step. Uh, the second step is looking over the weekly cycle report. And how efficient is your office with recruiting? Are you generating touches and then converting them uh, to launch representatives or where's the holes in your, your efficiency if you're not? And when you're, when you're really looking at that sources and the weekly management, you're gonna find your most efficient sources are your manager driven. Like the big three I think are your manager set PRs, your campus tables. So a manager's on campus, on table, where you can look at a student, go grab them, talk to them, fill out an application, get them to show, uh, to interview that day. And then your social media direct messages. Those are the things the managers have the most control over. So those are where you want to be spending most of your time with your recruiting. So then during the staff meeting, you should be spending time with your managers of how to read the cycle report correctly. What are the proper benchmarks to reach for each, for each percentage? And asking, okay, well, our kept percentage was 50%. Is that good? No, and a lot of times the first time they don't even know they'll say I don't know it's like well think about all the work we put in advertising and half the people that show up for an interview we send them away does that sound like it's a good thing no what should it be yeah, it's usually like 70 80 percent so if we want to improve it what should we do and you're constantly asking questions and this is how new managers learn the business by forcing them to think by guiding them through step by step of our recruiting process of productivity and asking them questions and having come up with the answers um, you'd be surprised what some of the answers is, how simple it is. Usually the managers are say, well, shouldn't you just keep more people? And you're like, that would be a great start to keep more people. And then also, you know, things like advertise more towards the people we generally keep higher percentages of. Um, so not just what are the benchmarks supposed to be, but then also coming up with action steps of, okay, how are we going to increase this? What, what are the steps we need to take to increase each percentage? And you can even get more in depth um, for each percentage of show to training and launch from training. That's a great way to jump into training topics and interview topics as well. So on a daily management, that's weekly. So weekly, you should have your, your 50 to 100 sources, minimum 50. You should have 100. If you have 10 high schools in your territory, you should have 100 sources. You have a couple colleges. Those are, those are five to 10 sources each. Um, your weekly cycle report should be covered at your staff meeting. Uh, focusing on especially your manager driven sources and reviewing how do we increase those now daily management is very simple it's the daily cycle report it's the same thing as weekly but you look at it daily and a, a great phrase that was just been pounded into my head as, as a up-and-coming manager was good managers don't have bad weeks because they manage it on a daily basis so good managers shouldn't have bad recruiting weeks because they manage their recruiting on a daily basis 
when back in the old days, when I was an assistant manager, we used to have to fill out a piece of paper and write down all the stats and look at the papers from the receptionist and add up all the totals. And it took, you know, 15, 20 minutes to come up with all the statistics uh, for the day. You guys just go to Vector Live. It should be on advertising stats. Change that to cycle report, click the day, hit get report, and then boom, you have the daily cycle report. And you can look, hey, how many, how many touches did we generate today? How many did we recruit today? Uh, what was our show today? What can we do to increase it? Did we send out reminder texts for people that were scheduled over a week in advance, three days in advance? No, oh, that's something we could probably do to improve it. Hey, we only had two manager generated sources. We should probably work harder and generate some more touches. That'll probably get some better people in interviews. How many PRs did we have into the day? Were those just conveyor PRs or were there manager set PRs? Those are all great questions to be asking yourself daily when you're looking at that cycle report. This takes five to 10 minutes. But if you do this at the end of every day, it'll really help you come up with your three to five steps for the next day of what do I need to do to really impact my results for tomorrow so I don't have a bad recruiting week. This is something I can do five to 10 minutes every day to avoid having bad recruiting weeks because I'm looking at it every single day. And that's really recruiting. That, that's, that's really what it comes down to. If you're looking at it every week, you're looking at it every day, and then you're taking appropriate actions where you see your weaknesses, that's it. You're going to recruit a lot of people. So when you recruit a lot of people, then you have a bunch of people in your office. If you want to keep them, then you need to develop them. And so there's weekly management. And of course, there's, there's daily management. Daily management, I'm not going to get too much into. It's just do good PDI. Um, you, there's a PDI checklist you can check out uh, that all of you should have. Um, doing good PDI from the office with web PDI in front of you, marking down results, you know, where if the rep looked at the, their web PDI, it shouldn't be empty. It, they should look at it and say, wow, you take notes on everything I tell you. That's great. You, I can really tell you're there to help me out. Not just like, why is it blank? Uh, do, don't you ever pay attention to what I'm talking to you? So making sure we're using that web PDI. So now weekly management, here's some steps for your developing your reps on a weekly basis. First thing is have your list of 10 up to 25 or so of your, basically your development list. And it's every week, who are your top 10 to 25 people? And it's where are they now? Where do you see them by the end of the campaign? Where do you see them the next summer? And where do you see them maybe the previous year? You should have you know, a little bit into the future. And you're updating this every week. Anybody that comes off of their fast start, you're putting them on. So maybe they didn't have the best fast start. They're a team member. Where do you see them at the end of the campaign? Well, maybe they could be a key staff person. Um, maybe they're, they finish their fast start great and they're an AMC right away, right after their fast start because you're using the development program. Um, and maybe you see them as an assistant manager uh, in the next campaign and a branch manager the summer after that. But every single week you're looking at this and it should have where you see them, what their career sales are. And then just one little thing for notes. And that note doesn't have to be long. It can be half a sentence of what are you focusing on with that person? This person's great. I just need to work on their leads. Uh, this person just needs help with virtual demos. This person just needs work with confidence, needs to help selling at school, need to promote whatever it is. And just by looking at that once a week, updating it, you're naturally going to be thinking about your people. So your top 10 to 25 list. Second thing is your weekly sales report. So here are the things that you should be focusing on every week when you, you do your weekly sales report. One, are, do, does every single rep have an order, right? If they don't, they're done. They're toast. So you got you to gotta go revive them. So you got to make sure every single rep should have at least one order. Making sure your development candidate should have three to four orders. I don't care if they sell one to $2,000 for the week if they only had one order. I want every development candidate to have three to four orders every single week because if they don't, that means they're not getting a ton of leads and they're going to have a hard time keeping the momentum. So I'm focusing on at least three to four orders during the school year. I want to see a lot more during the summer. And then what the third thing is your new business benchmark. And you know, our, our, our benchmark when, when we were running district office was 10,000, you know, maybe you start at four and then move it to six and then get up to eventually to 10, but you need to have a no matter what um, benchmark where our office ships this much. Otherwise that means I'm not doing my job and I gotta make sure that I'm, I'm, if I'm gonna be a manager, I'm gonna do it right. So if, if, new man, if new people aren't selling, no development is happening. So making sure all reps have at least one order. Your development candidates have three to four orders during the school year. You hit your new business benchmark, which should be, if you're at shipping crap right now, then get it to four. And if you are shipping a little bit, get it to six. If you're shipping five or six right now, get it to 10 and then keep it there. 
And then your last thing you're looking at is your first and second weekend business, right? How much pop did you have? What are your averages? And you can do that with that pillars exercise that we do at the staff meetings every single week. It's a good way to kind of break it down and look, but don't just look at the averages, look at number of orders. Does everybody have an order? Who doesn't have an order? And then what are you doing about it? Are those people getting field trained? Are those people having PCs with them? Making sure if they don't have an order, they better be coming in on Monday or Sunday night for a weekly one-on-one -on -one check in 10 to 15 minutes, sit down, drill out their schedule, check out their names list, make sure you get their names list up to 15 to 25 people to call and get them on the phone before they leave the office. So they leave coming with two demos and you know, they're not going to have a, a week without an order. That's a manager taking control and saying, no matter what, I'm going to make sure this person has orders. Cause I know if I spend 15 minutes with them and I help them with their schedule and show them that they have people to call, I help them set a demo before they leave. Then there's no way they're not going to sell at least something. Moving on with development, uh, your rising star key staff meetings, you know, and this should be generally run every single week. Uh, this should be strategically placed in your office schedule. There's not one perfect time, but strategically placed so you can get more benefit than just having the meeting. So maybe you have it before or after a Thursday phone jam. So they have the meeting and then they phone jam or you have the phone jam and then the meeting. Uh, maybe you have it before the team meeting during the school year uh, to maximize attendance. That's one of the things that we focus on in our office a little bit harder to get to in Seattle. So a lot of times we'll have them before the team meeting. So that way it's not a separate day and I'm, I'm dealing with bad attendance, getting them to come in multiple days from far distances. Um, when you develop your rising stars then you can, if you like, increase to have a key staff meeting and have two separate meetings where you kind of have your very inclusive rising star, everybody hits a thousand, then you're more exclusive, your key staff where you teach higher level things that, you know, are designed to teach to get people to FSM level. Um, but some of your focus should be on leadership, mastering sales, mastering leads and phones, goal setting, accomplish, accomplishing goals, right? Accomplishing things, really mastering the basics. Now for advanced district managers, when you start having branch manager candidates and district manager candidates, uh, one of the things that you're gonna wanna do is have a PC with them. Uh, I'd say at least once every two weeks, right? If you're really drilling in, maybe once a week where you're just, um, helping them see where are they on their timeline, focus on their weaknesses, building their confidence, making sure they know they're gonna learn the interview, they're gonna learn training, they're gonna learn the advanced trainings, everything. So that way you're putting out great development. When you're, somebody comes out of your office, to go run a branch or a district, um, they go out and they crush it because of the preparation and really just from watching you run a kick-ass office. That's, that's the best way to have uh, great development. And that wraps up development. So to review development, your weekly management is having your, updating your top 10 to 25 list right? How much did those people sell that week? You need to change their career sales. Did you see any changes? Did this person come out of nowhere and now all of a sudden you see them as an assistant manager, right? What are some notes on those people focusing on helping them get them to the next level? Um, second thing is your weekly sales report, making sure everybody has an order. Your top people have three to four orders. You're hitting your bit new business benchmark, you know, four, six or 10, wherever you're at right now. And then constantly focusing on increasing that. And then your pillar exercise, really focusing on your first and second week in business. Where is the new business coming from your team? Uh, running development meetings each week, a rising star, a key staff or both. And if you're uh, advanced then having uh, some PCs with your development people, with your branch or your uh, district manager candidates for the next year, uh, you do that. You're going to get a lot of people that you're, you're going to turn those recruits into great sales reps and they're going to develop and they're become assistant managers and branch managers and FSMs. And you're going to be surrounded by a lot of people, which is going to make your office really fun. And what it also does is allows you to have some lifestyle. Now lifestyle means different things at different phases of your business. Lifestyle for me as a branch manager, where, you know, as a branch manager, you don't want assistant managers because you're going to spend more time teaching them how not to mess up than you are. They're going to help anything. So, you know, first time branch managers, you want to run the show on your own. And so my lifestyle as a branch manager was Saturday night from generally about 10 PM until midnight before I fell asleep. And then Saturday morning or Sunday morning until, you know, about three o'clock in the afternoon, um, I, I just generally sleep and take phone calls and that, that was my fun lifestyle at that time. The rest of it was all office. You know, I, we did like team night out like six nights a week where you'd go to Denny's or go bowling or whatever. I wanted to spend as much time with my people as possible. It wasn't, I wasn't there to have, you know, vacation time and stuff. I was there to run a business and see how much I could create if I put a hundred percent of myself into one thing um, for a, a brief amount of time. Now as a new district manager, my lifestyle got a little bit better, right? So my lifestyle came um, from new district manager for my first three years, maybe three and a half years, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday nights, 9 p.m. till midnight, 
we'd be at 24 hour fitness playing, but basketball, I usually have a rep or two come with me and still be playing hoops. Um, Saturday, usually leave the office about five o'clock after we started hearing the first round of calls from the, from the new training class. And then I'd be back in the office about Sunday night at 6 PM. So I'd have about a 24, 25 hour break there where that was, I'd be going out Saturday night with some buddies, having fun, relaxing a little bit, rejuvenating Sunday, taking it easy, watching football or, or do something like that. And those are my times. Uh, you know, Thursday was usually a sleep in day. Um, Friday, not as early as some of the other days, but Monday, Tuesday, I was up on campus, you know, table starts at 7.55. You know, by 8 o'clock, you got to be ready to go uh, running that table on campus at um, Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. We had these long six-hour staff meetings, which is a whole other story, but we'll, we'll get into that later. And you have to have some rejuvenation right? As you grow and you start having four or five assistant managers and they're better than you at running an interview and PDI, which is, it should be very tough. You, you should never let an assistant manager be better than you, but getting to where they're at least getting equal results, then you can start talking about taking a day out of the office or a couple days and having a weekend a month where you let them, your branch manager run training when they're ready. Um, you taking a week long vacation when the company trip has a week long vacation and then maybe one in the fall. Um, you know, those are the types of things, but, um, it's important to share those things with your team where you're playing basketball and doing those other things because they, they see that and they're like, Oh man, that looks awesome. You're right. I want to have that fun stuff. And your development should be wanting that type of lifestyle as well. So healthy lifestyle, right? You don't want to look drained. You don't want to look tired. You don't want to look like you're sleeping in the office. You want to look all disheveled. Like you wore the same suit seven days in a row. You know, you should be looking like you're, you're, you're running your business right? Your young business professional is running their own business, gets to control their old schedule. And you decide that you want to work that much because you love what you're doing. You're creating it with great people. It's exciting. And any young person would be lucky to have that same opportunity. And you're going to attract people like that. And if you get a lot of people that want to do that, all of a sudden you have four or five, six assistant managers. They start fighting over who gets to run the interviews, who gets to them. You put more interviews in the schedule. You have five, six, seven people on campus when you, when you do that. That's when things are really rolling. And then what happens is you get more development. When you have more development, you have more tools at your disposal where you have seven assistant managers all doing PRs and it's just, just you. And so you start recruiting more and then the cycle starts over again. So recruit, develop lifestyle. That is how you, you run your district office, but it starts at the very beginning. It starts with those steps with recruiting. It starts with your 50 to hundred sources. It starts with maximizing those sources every single week, making sure you're checking the boxes. How many of them did I get? Could you, could you advertise in 75 sources a week for six weeks in a row? You do that. You can't tell me there's no way you're launching at least five people a week. So focus on the recruiting, then get into the development and the lifestyle will happen. You do that. You're going to run a great successful district office for a long, long time. Thanks, guys.